So I want to tell you what we do in the office and what things are out there for you to, to take advantage of. Um, and I want to talk quickly about some things that I know will be on a lot of people's minds, which are basically like, have I applied for all of the right things in order to get financial aid? And then what other money is out there and how do I get it? Um, those, are, those are pretty much our big questions, is how am I going to pay this bill and what other money is available? So here's our contact information. We are in the Whitmore building. We're open 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, the Whitmore building is sort of the administrative hub for campus. So the housing office, the billing office, uh, the ID card office, the chancellor's office, registrar's office, and financial aid are all in the same place. Um, you get a lot done in that building if you ever have some needs about what it's like to be a student here or you're going to need to take care of something like your bill or registering for classes, you're going to end up in that building. Um, it makes a good uh, hub and sort of one-stop shop for people to come to. We also run a couple of satellite offices on campus. We're in the International Programs Office on Tuesday afternoons to help students figure out how they're going to pay for study abroad. Uh, and we are in the Center for Multicultural Advancement and Student Success, or CMAS, on Thursday afternoons, just so we can be in sort of a more comfortable environment that's not quite so office-like. Um, CMAS also has a really nice computer lab, and we stay there late on Thursday nights to help people file their FAFSAs. So if at any point you want help filing your FAFSA or making a correction to your FAFSA, you can stop in and see us either in the office or at CMAS, and we can help you with your FAFSA. And we're in the library learning commons on Thursday evenings from 5 to 8, so if people can't make it into the office on our traditional business hours, you can come see us in the library. Some of the things that we offer in financial aid services, um, all of our services are drop-in. You do not need to make an appointment. You can stop in to see us anytime we are open. Um, myself or one of my counselors will be available to help you with any questions that you have. Again, no appointment necessary. Um, you can always call or email if you like uh, to sort of prep us for what you're coming in for, but, but no pressure. You just come see us. Uh, our bread and butter in the office is really helping people figure out their university bill. I mean, most people come to see us because they've either preparing for this university bill or they've just gotten this big university bill or their bill was due two weeks ago and they're trying to figure out how they're gonna pay for it. So most of what we do is help people translate their charges, make sure they've done their billing correctly, that they're billing, being billed appropriately for like where they live and the enrollment that they're in, um, and then helping them figure out how, how to get their financial aid applied to the bill, make sure everything is applied the way it should be, and then help people figure out how they're gonna close that gap between what their aid is covering and what their bill is asking them to pay. So helping people through things like private loans, scholarship applications, helping them with payment plans, and generally making a plan to cover their university expenses. Um, to wit, we do a lot of help with the FAFSA. So uh, we help people apply for the FAFSA. We'll help people make corrections to the FAFSA. And if you file your FAFSA and you get stuck in something like verification or you're missing documents or signatures, we'll help you through that process. Uh, we also have an appeal process that we work in the office, which I'll talk about in a moment when I get to the how can I get more money section of the presentation. Um, we help people search for and apply for scholarships. We're happy to read people's scholarship materials. So if, you have a, if you're a student who's working on a scholarship essay and you wanna make sure you're saying the right things or coming across as, as well as possible, you can bring your essay into us and we'll read it, we'll give you pointers. Um, we'll also get to know students and families when they come to see us and make suggestions for scholarships that we might know of that might be helpful based on sort of their interests and where they live and other factors that we might know about for connecting with like local scholarships or departmental scholarships on campus. We serve as the student employment office for the university. So I'll talk a little bit about student employment here. Um, let me jump into this slide, which I actually thought I was already on, sorry. <laughs> um, so we do serve as the student employment office on campus. Um, we operate a job listing service um, for the campus. So any jobs that are posted on campus, we run them through our website. Um, student employment on campus works a bit like the one ads in the newspaper. So um, you basically, We'll see a job posting online. It'll have a contact information, description of the job, and then students go out and apply, and apply for the job themselves. But we're happy to help connect students to those jobs and, again, make sure that their materials look good and that they're putting their best foot forward when they apply for a job. So students can always come see us and we'll help them through that process. I mentioned that we do some satellite hours in the study abroad office. Um, UMass is very fortunate. We have a great international programs office and they vet all of the programs on which we send students. So we have like about 1,500 different study abroad programs. Uh, the International Programs Office is at the Expo today, so if you have questions about a study abroad experience that you might want to have in a future year here, you can stop up and see them at the Expo. Um, but because they have gone out and they have vetted all of these programs and verified that the programs are safe and that the quality of the education that the student gets on the program is similar to what they would get at UMass, students can use their financial aid to go abroad, and that is not true at all schools. Most schools have very limited study abroad offerings that will work for financial aid. So we're very pleased that our students who receive financial aid and who have financial need uh, can still have the same type of experience with a study abroad that students who, who don't have those things can do. Um, it does require some planning, so if you're thinking you want to go on a study abroad, stop in and see us like a semester early before you're planning to go. We'll sort of get you set up with like a timeline and make sure you know what to expect, and then we can make sure that your money is all ready to go and can transfer directly over to the study abroad program. 
Obviously, we do assistance with loans, grants, scholarships, work study, all types of financial aid. So any questions you've got, whether it's a federal program, a state program, some private scholarship program, if you're looking for a private loan or if questions about a federal loan, all come through our office. Um, we'll help you figure out payment plans, make sure you're in a good schedule with your, um, with your student loans and that you understand the debt that you're getting into, things like that. Um, and I put up here that we do financial wellness counseling. Financial wellness is just sort of a, a general sense of financial well-being that we'd like to impart to our students. We found that most students who come into us, the, the college, their college years are really the first time that they're having to do a lot of financial stuff on their own. So many students come in having never written a check or maybe never having a checking account, um, never having to make a budget, never having to focus too much on like money in versus money out. So there's a great uh, student organization on campus called Smart About Money or SAM. Um, they do peer-to-peer -peer financial counseling. So the, the ambassadors, they call them, the students who work for them, uh, are available for students to make appointments. So you can make an appointment with a ambassador, sit down with another student who's gone through training on like, you know, building your credit, planning a budget, planning for like a major expense. Um, so students will make those appointments with ambassadors and meet with them. But we also run events with the ambassadors. So like the financial aid office will come in and do a presentation on um, like preparing for paying your bill or student loans or student loan repayment. And then the ambassadors will do a presentation on something like preparing to move off campus or focusing on a specific event. Um, it's a great program. It's, it's been very helpful for students who are interested um, to get some tools that they might not have gotten before then and, and be prepared to go out into the world feeling a little more financially savvy than they would have before. Of course, everything's on the web, including this presentation. So we have videos up there. There's a chat bot that you can talk to and ask it questions in real time. It'll sort of direct you to like the FAQ on our office to get your questions answered. Um, you can email us, you can contact us through the website. We have a great scholarship listing service on there, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, student job board, and then any forms that we would ask for are on there as well. So I mentioned that uh, what people usually wanna see is, is where's the money and, and have, I, have I gotten all of it that I can get? Uh, I'm gonna talk in particular about scholarships here in just a minute, but first let me do sort of a breakdown on how UMass uh, assigns its financial aid to students. It's, it's sort of a three-part process. Um, everyone in this room has at least completed part one which is you've applied for admission and gotten in. Uh, our admissions office has a chunk of merit-based funding that they assign to some students at the time of admission. It is a one-shot deal. Uh, they use that money sort of as a recruiting, cool, recruiting, recruiting tool to try to bring in their strongest possible class. Um, when they make their offer of admission, they do give some students a merit scholarship at that time. There's no special application. There's no appealing for it. So if, if you have applied and gotten in, you didn't get a merit scholarship, I'm sorry. If you did, congratulations. Um, but that's a one-shot deal, and that's sort of like one column where the money is parked. The second place is with the financial aid office. Our office handles all federal, state, and institutional grants that are related to financial need, uh, all student loan programs, and federal work study. We have one application for all of those things, and it is the FAFSA. Um, you do not need to do a CSS profile. There is no institutional application, FAFSA only, which is nice, because it's a nice, easy form. When you complete the FAFSA, uh, what we do is we will pull in your FAFSA about a week or two after you've been admitted to the university. As long as you've been admitted and have a FAFSA on file, we will create an aid package for you. And we are drawing from all of the different types of money that we can get our hands on. So we're pulling grant money from the Fed, grants from the state. Uh, we have an institutional grant program. Everything is formula-based uh, and it's only based on the sort of numerical information that's on your FAFSA. So we're not looking at your academic merit. We're not looking at you know, how much we like you as a candidate is solely based on the numbers that are on the FAFSA. Um, we can, uh, of course, make edits and appeals to those FAFSAs. So if something changes with your circumstances, we wanna hear about it, but we're doing all of our consideration of financial aid via the FAFSA. So I mentioned um, appeals as part of this sort of, you know, have I done everything I can do? Many people will come to us and they'll say, hey, my FAFSA asked for my 2018 information. Obviously it's two years old. Things have changed since then. So if you are in a situation where you've had a change in income, uh, like a parent has retired or lost a job or gone part-time or something like that, there's been a death in the family, a divorce. Um, if you had another kid, if you thought one kid was gonna be going to college and instead it's two, you know, any sort of change that wasn't represented on the FAFSA, we would like to hear about it. And we have a method for working you through that process from the admin side. You don't have to change it yourself in FAFSA. You don't have to worry that you, uh, your situation is not being reported accurately. Just call us or email us or come see us. We'll walk you through the process. Um, there's a little paperwork that goes with all of it. But basically what we're looking for is, you know, if there is some change to one of the fields in the FAFSA, like your income, um, like the number in family, like marital status, we want to record it accurately based on today. We don't want to be stuck on old, inaccurate information. 
Um, similarly, if 2018 was a year in which you had unusually high income, like you got a bonus or, you know, I don't know, your company closed and you had a one-time payout or something like that, give us a call because we have ways of working around the, the sort of unusually large income and, and instead using like a normal income amount. Um, and then third, the third place where UMass parks its money, I'm gonna sort of say it's, it's just everywhere else, but the university has taken a, a large chunk of money and allocated it to individual departments on campus. So every academic department, major, college, uh, and then entities like the Alumni Association, the Development Office, um, some of the Financial Aid Office, these, they all have these little funds that are funded by individual donors. Um, and those scholarships work similarly to uh, what you would see like in your community now, like an outside scholarship from your high school or your hometown. Um, there's a separate application process for these scholarships. They have different criteria based on how the donor set them up. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit now about how to be a good applicant for those scholarships. And UMass has done a nice thing and has put all of the UMass scholarships into one place and given them one application so you don't have to go hunting for them and make a million different applications. You can just do one and I'll talk a bit more about that. So all of the different places that you can find scholarships we usually advise students to keep it local when they're making their search. You want to be like a big fish in a small pond. You don't want to Google how do I find a scholarship and go to the top link because that's going to be you and three million other people all applying for the same scholarship. You want to apply someplace small. So your high school, I'm sure you're all applying to your high schools now. Your high school guidance office is a great resource for any local scholarships that might be out there. So whatever, the Rotary Club, the Boys and Girls Club, um, any sort of local civic organizations that might have scholarships to offer, they're typically looking to make a splash at like high school scholarship nights because they wanna show their support for their community. So talk to your guidance office, make sure you've applied for scholarships locally. Sometimes the guidance office will have done it for you or they'll have a relationship with like a scholarship providers to pick people automatically, but just make sure you're not missing on any local scholarship applications that you should be filling out. This is like prime time for scholarship applications. Usually that winter, like January 1st to the middle of March is when scholarships are open and usually due dates are beginning of March or beginning of April because all of these scholarship donors want to uh, be out there for those like graduation scholarship nights. So any place you've got a connection, your employer, a parent's employer, check there, see if there are scholarships. If you're active in like a church or a religious organization, if you know, grandpa's in the VFW or something like that, any place where you've got a, a toehold on a scholarship, do check and see if you can apply. I've got listed your academic department and your financial aid office. These will be places where, again, you're sort of in a smaller crowd. You're the only one, you know, you're only competing with other people in your major, only competing with other people in your college for those scholarships, only competing with other UMass students for things to the financial aid office. Um, if you are gonna do like a Google search, try to narrow it down. You wanna talk about your major, your hometown, your school district, something like that. Don't get into the, the massive national scholarship pool uh, unless you're going for like a, you know, like a Rhodes Scholar or something like that or a Fulbright. Like, I mean, those are the different process. Um, but the sort of general Googling scholarships typically doesn't work out. Um, this is the website I mentioned, Academic Works. That is our one-stop shop for scholarships. So all of the UMass scholarships are housed at Academic Works. Academic Works is a really cool program. Um, before students had to apply, you know, find and apply for all these different scholarships that were at UMass, so the ones with their major and their school and the Alumni Association. Now they just go to Academic Works. There's one application that'll ask questions about, it'll ask for an essay. Um, your common app essay makes a great scholarship essay typically. I usually tell people maybe some slight modification, but don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. You've already written an essay that got you into college. It should also be pretty good to get you scholarships. Um, so it'll ask you some questions about where you're from, your interest, have you worked, have you volunteered, are you active in your church, things like that. And behind the scenes, what it's doing is it is trying to connect you with all of these different scholarships at UMass that were funded by donors that have specific criteria. So typically the general application is good enough to get you into consideration for several hundred scholarships based on your major and your year in school. Um, more specific scholarship types that have more specific questions, um, Academic Works will send students emails and say, hey, it looks like you might be a fit for this scholarship, but we need you to answer these five questions. Or if you wanna be considered, write another essay. It's a great program, it's very easy to work with. It's a huge time saver for students are now not having to like search for a ton of different scholarships. And it's really nice to do the application once and then you know three or four months later, sometimes you get a scholarship out of it that you hadn't thought you'd apply for. It's, it's a really nice, nice feature. We also have all of the scholarships that we know have listed on our website that umass.edu slash umfa slash scholarship is a link to our scholarship database. There's about 850 different scholarships on there with a description of the scholarship. It is searchable, so you can search by major or your year in school or you know FAFSA yes, no, merit or need, things like that. Um, and many of the scholarships that are listed there will say in order to apply, go to Academic Works. So we, we have them all sort of listed twice there. Um, one note on Academic Works, students cannot apply to Academic Works until they have attended orientation. It is not open to prospective students. You have to be committed and in. But around mid-May, 
once you've uh, decided that you're coming here, you can then do your academic work application and be considered for the summer and, and onward. A lot of times students ask us what makes a good scholarship application, so I'll just spend a couple minutes on it here. Um, the, the gist of it basically is you wanna to speak to the donor. Um, I read a ton of different scholarship essays. Um, I volunteer with the Community Foundation of Western Mass, which is a great scholarship provider in Springfield. And I, I've read thousands of scholarship essays and, and without fail, the, the things that are gonna to speak to the donor are your passion and your commitment for the things that the donor was passionate about and committed to. So if you're applying for a scholarship that's for biology majors and you're a bio major, you wanna hammer home that you're interested in biology and you wanna do good things in that field when you graduate. You wanna be someone that the donor is proud to support Part of that is having good academic merit and having a good story. It also is important to have a good, clean application, like no typos, no mistakes, make sure you spend the time on it. Um, I do tell people, keep your scholarship essays. Um, as, as good a job as you want to do for each one, you can often use the same essay for many scholarships and different scholarship committees are not gonna know that you're sending the same essay, so don't feel like you have to write a fresh one every time, but get a good one. I'm gonna stand out in a good way. If you want someone to help you with their scholarship essays, you come see me or someone on my staff. We'll be happy to read what you're submitting. We'll give you pointers. We'll make sure that you're putting your best foot forward when you do apply. Some of the things that people tend to, to hammer home in terms of showing their passion are here on the right. So community involvement, you know, where have you demonstrated leadership and enthusiasm? You know, is it at work? Is it a volunteer thing? Do you have, did you have to stay home and help your family raise your siblings? Things like that. What's your story? You wanna be able to show them a little bit about who you are and why you're a good fit for their scholarship. And some quick hits on student employment. Um, at any given time on campus, we have about 6,000 student employees working. I'm sure you've met several of them today who are helping with the admissions event. Um, there are tons and tons of different jobs on campus and they run the gamut from sort of general office work or you know, like washing dishes in the dining hall to like working in labs or writing grants. I mean, the, the, the spectrum of work that is done is very impressive by our students here. Um, students are allowed to work up to 20 hours a week on campus from all of their jobs put together. Uh, they get paid every two weeks, just like I do, check from the, uh, the state of Massachusetts. Um, work study does not credit your tuition bill. Student employment does not credit the tuition bill. I know some schools offer you this sort of option to work off some of your tuition, but UMass does not. Um, we've got all of our job listings online there at umass.edu slash umfa slash SEO. That job listing is updated every day, so we take down jobs that are full, and we post new ones every day. Um, a lot of times people are worried, like they applied for financial aid but didn't get work study, can I still work on campus? Um, there are both work study and non-work study jobs on campus and it's about half and half. So about 3,000 people every year are working not on work study and about 3,000 have the work study grant. So don't worry if you didn't get the work study grant as part of your financial aid award, you, you absolutely can still work on campus, just have to look for a non-work study job. And this is our timeline that happens, oh, maybe a little cut off here. Um, so pretty much every year what we do is, um, oh, so, okay, so they cut off the first part of my timeline here, so because we're, we're now on the far left there. So um, every year uh, in um, mid-July, we'll send out your fall bill, and in mid-August, that bill is due. Uh, we follow the same formula every year. The FAFSA comes available in October um, for the upcoming year. We will put any to-dos uh, on your checklist in Spire, so the student portal that you're using through UMass. Um, we're here on the left and the sort of students notified that we need additional info. If we get your FAFSA and you're selected for verification, if we need tax information or signatures or proof of citizenship or anything like that, we have a to-do list in your Spire portal where we will put to-dos and then we'll send you an email every two weeks saying, hey, you have a to-do in your to-do list. Here's how you resolve it. Um, you can click on the to-dos and if there's a form that we need, the form is right there. Um, many of our forms can be submitted online directly through the to-do list. Um, but please resolve anything that you see in the to-dos. If you have a financial aid award, it's not considered final until all of your to-dos are taken care of. Um, and if you have questions about any of it, obviously call us, we'll walk you through it. Um, May 1st is the admissions decision deadline. Um, sometime between the first week of June and about the second week of July, you'll attend new student orientation. And in that window also, you'll get access to academic works. We'll talk about it again when you have new student orientation, you'll see me again and I'll be, be preaching the, the goodness of academic works then. Um, and then that bill comes out in mid-July. Um, we're open all summer, we're here all summer, we wanna help you figure out what you're gonna do. So for families who are trying to make your plans, we'll try to get you your bill and your financial aid with many months worth of time where you can figure out what your, what your plan needs to be before it's due in August. But please do call us or email us or come see us. We wanna sit down with you, make sure you've got a good plan, that you understand all the different ins and outs of how the process works. 